On December 28, 1805, the Lewis and Clark expedition sent out a detachment of five men searching for a good place to build a salt works and make salt on the Oregon coast. They recognized that salt was vital to their ability to survive and to survive the long journey back east after reaching their furthest point west. Salt, like water, is vital to human survival. And just like our ancestors of thousands and thousands of years ago, when we lack salt in our diet, our body starts craving it. The human body requires sodium to conduct nerve impulses, to contract and relax muscles, and to maintain the proper balance of water and minerals. Adult humans need a minimum of 500 milligrams of sodium daily for these vital functions. If you don't have salt in your prepping supplies, you absolutely should. Salt can be used as a preservative because bacteria cannot grow in the presence of a high amount of salt. A little goes a long way too. Just a teaspoon spread through all your meals throughout a day will provide you with five times that minimum of 500 milligrams. We eat some salt and vegetables, though it is usually found in small amounts. In the aftermath of a long drawn out disaster, sourcing salt for food preservation or just general consumption may be difficult. There are two primary ways we get salt today. We either find a deposit and mine it, or we harvest it from ocean water by evaporating off the hydrogen and oxygen atoms, H2O, and leaving the NaCl or sodium chloride behind. It almost seems too easy to make a whole video out of it, but we're going to use a gallon of ocean water and see how much salt we can get out of it. If you were to find a salt deposit, you could dilute the salt rock into brine and use the same technique to convert it into usable salt. Would it be easier to buy salt and simply store it? Absolutely. Hey, but what's the fun in that? Let's try this out. Download the Start Preparing Survival Guide to help you prepare for any disaster. I'll post a link in the description and comment section below or visit cityprepping.com forward slash get started for a free guide to help you get started on your journey of preparedness. I started by getting a gallon of ocean water on a recent trip to a Southern California beach. You want to ensure the ocean water you pull for this purpose is sourced from the cleanest ocean water, away from any runoff sources or pollutants. Here I had to filter off some sand and sediment that I also took in when collecting the water along the shoreline. If we did a deep chemical analysis of it, we would probably find some chemicals that we don't want, but that's probably true for about almost every food product that you purchase in the store. After all, not all ingredients, sprays, pesticides, and so forth are required to be listed on our packaging. So I'm confident that this gallon of water is safe enough to convert and use as salt in my cooking. Plus, a little later on in this video, I will tell you some of the not so great chemicals that are in your table salt right now that are probably way worse for you than any trace element in this water. There are about 35 grams of dissolved salt in each liter of seawater. Fresh water, by contrast, has less than 1,000 parts per million. I have four liters I'm going to convert to salt, so my yield should be approximately 140 grams or almost five ounces or five eighths of a cup. That may seem like a lot, but at the minimal survival amount of 500 milligrams, that's enough salt to last one person 280 days. Just a pinch of it in your daily water or food should be enough to keep you alive, maintain a proper hydration level, and keep your nerves firing correctly. The process is simple. Start by boiling it on high heat until it is reduced to about two thirds or more. You will see the salt start to collect around the outside. In the bottom of the pan as a hydrogen and oxygen atoms evaporate off the steam. After about two hours, you will have reduced the seawater to the point where you can turn down the heat. You will easily be able to scrape the salt from the sides, and you should have a slurry of salt which keeps its form when held aloft on a utensil. You can't burn salt. Reduce the heat to the point where you no longer have bubbles popping salt out of the pan, but you aren't in jeopardy of evaporating off all the water too quickly. I stir mine periodically to keep the salt dissolved in the liquid where I can. I'll finish this process in the oven, so I want to reduce it to where the salt granules are the consistency of wet sand. I pull them off the pan and then place them in a pie tin lined with a piece of parchment paper. I then spread it out to have a uniform piece of salt to dry better. What's happening is the hydrogen and oxygen atoms are continuing to gas off, which leaves behind mainly sodium chloride and whatever other trace minerals are in the salt. I now will put this in my oven at its lowest setting, 175 degrees. After 12 hours, it's as dry as it's going to get. Processing salt in this manner gives you what is classified as a wet salt. It will retain between 2 and 4% moisture. That is far below the threshold required for bacteria or any other organism to survive. So this salt is perfect for preserving foods, though it may seem moist to the touch. 
through centrifugal processing, extreme compaction, or if I remove it from the parchment paper and bake it for much longer at higher temperatures, I can dry it down even further. I ended up with almost five ounces, which is right on par with my math on this and the general salinity of seawater. To me, the salt actually tastes better. It has a fine crystal and is almost like a finishing salt. I probably have about seven different types of salt on hand right now. So trust me when I say that this sea salt that I've made has a bit of a bite when alone, but doesn't overpower the food when used in cooking. Some clumping may occur because there are no anti-caking agents added to this pure salt. Store-bought salts, on the other hand, often have anti-caking agents like sodium, potassium, and calcium ferrocyanide, silicone dioxide, or calcium silicon in them. And if you don't like the idea of those chemicals like cyanide, aluminum, or dioxides in your food, you may want to consider this method of salt refinement or seek additive-free salts for your diet. For any clumps, you can simply crush or break them by hand once it is cooled. I will put mine in a small dish, open air, right next to my stove. I've heard it said that sea salt is healthier for you, but the salts that you can buy or refine have the same fundamental nutritional value. There are a few more minerals in sea salt, and honestly, I think it just tastes better. Salt is so essential that it has been used as a commodity throughout history. Salt creates an environment bacteria cannot stand, so you can actually use it as a gargle. Salt dissolves in just a little warm water. As a highly dissolvable, mild abrasive, you can use it as a gentle toothpaste. You can use a little in laundry to harden the water and get more clean power out of your soap. If you're dyeing cloth, you can use it as a salt bath to fix the color. You can rub meats with salt and dry the meat to preserve the food for longer. It is the original preservative. Salt is a flavor enhancer, so it can make bland food taste better. The method we use here dates back at least to the 27th century BC in China and maybe earlier. Egyptians used the same method. Using a series of pools, the water was allowed to evaporate off, and the salt brine was moved to pools with higher and higher concentrations until you could just scoop it up as we have done here. There are no ancient cultures who also don't know how to harvest salt. And that's why at least knowing and understanding the process is critical to continued survival. If you don't live near an ocean, salt lake, or salt mine, make sure to get some salt in your preps. If you shop around, you can get 26 ounces of it for about under a dollar. Insects, rodents, and bacteria, they're going to avoid it, so you only need to keep it dry in your preps. It's a cheap but essential prep for your survival. I have a five-gallon bucket of it. That will last me for years and years, even with pickling and preserving meats. If things get truly bad, it can be used as a commodity just like it has been for thousands of years. Tuck this strategy away in your pocket and ensure that you have salt in your preps. As always, stay safe out there.